As a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, I've always wanted my own time machine. I mean, DeLorean, except as one of the most iconic movie cars in the history of movies, these things are pretty expensive, selling for about $75,000, $80,000 in nice condition. And I've always been too chicken to pull the trigger on one that looks like this until now, because I got this car for only $33,000. But there was a catch. This DeLorean had been sitting in the same garage in North Dakota since 1991, and there was no telling what was wrong with it when it was parked or what it needs now to be put back on the road. But I do know one thing. I'm super determined to get this car restored and back on the road by Halloween because my family and I are gonna dress up as the cast of Back to the Future, and the car is going to be proudly displayed on my front lawn. It's August right now, which means I either have to invent a time machine to go back in time and buy a new DeLorean, or I have to work really hard to make my movie car dream a reality. So if you guys were around for the reveal video, then you know that we are working in a barn in Minnesota, kind of in the middle of nowhere. There are tractors pretty much everywhere. Like... This back room right here, it's got lots of tractors. We got our farm cat, which we named Lester. I'm not sure the actual name of this cat. We got Max. <laughs> and we have our DeLorean that's been sitting for 33 years. So we did a little bit of discovery in the last video. We have a ton more to do. There's some awesome paperwork under the hood. We haven't even checked the glove box yet. Uh, so we're gonna get into that. But first things first, this car would be a fantastic deal if the engine turned over and potentially ran. So that's what we're gonna attack right off the bat. So none of the shocks on this car work, and there are many. We have some for the doors that don't hold up either. Luckily we have vice grips though. Okay, let's see. Are they gonna stay? Oh. Cool, all right, now we gotta pull a cord to get this engine cover. And there's a little pull cord in there. And then this comes up like so. And here is the heart of the beast, a 2.8 liter V6 engine that produces 130 horsepower. So this was an engine built by Peugeot, Renault, and Volvo. And I think it was used in some Volvos in the United States, but it's actually a pretty stout engine. It just uses an older style mechanical fuel injection system from Bosch. So this has mechanical fuel injectors. This is kind of the heart of that system. And uh, right now we need to figure out if this engine is going to turn over and potentially fire because that makes my $33,000 DeLorean purchase just that much better. So we got to find the spark plugs because this engine could be locked together after sitting for 33 years. So yeah, we gotta find those right now. Just kind of poking around because these look like spark plug wires. I've never worked on a DeLorean in my life, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just a normal engine. We'll figure this out. Spark plugs are a little buried, so we're gonna start by taking off this air box. Oh, we have a hose here. And I'm actually surprised at the condition of some of these hoses. This is nice. The wiring harness is actually flexible. Look at the wires. That's really good. I mean, it's a 1981. What do we got? Oh, there it is. The CIS. This plunger should go down. There we go. We don't want to go too much. This system's a little goofy for today's day and age, but back then it was actually pretty robust. You just can't find anyone to work on these. And there's a good chance all of this is clogged up. Look at this. What in the world happened to this air filter? Wow. So the car reads 16,000 miles, clean Carfax and all that kind of good stuff. But these DeLoreans did have an issue with the odometer not working. Uh, this is a one owner vehicle though. Technically it's two owners, but the guy that I bought it from bought it with a house and he had to put it in his name like literally three weeks ago. Whoa. But he had heard a lot of the story from the previous owner. It was driven for 10 years, 1981 to 1991, just when it was nice out. So just in the summer. So it's got very low mileage, even if it's off by a little bit. But this is crazy. Wow. This is the worst air filter I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a, Vol it's a Volvo. It's the original air filter, but even if this thing had 50,000 miles, an air filter wouldn't look like this. I honestly don't know what happened to this. It's like, it, it's like mud. It has me a little bit concerned. Was this thing like submerged in like mucky water and dirt or something? I don't know. Uh, let's just move on. Well, this side is gonna be much easier than the other side, but here are the spark plug wires. And we're gonna do a little bit of vacuuming first. So these are the fuel lines going to the fuel injectors right here. And here are our spark plug wires. Oh yeah, there's a spark plug. That was a very satisfying pop from the spark plug right there. 
Uh, big moment of truth here, guys. There were a lot in the first video, just generally getting underneath this thing and looking at the frame and everything. And I think we're okay there, but let's pull this plug, stick a boroscope in there and fingers crossed. If this engine's good, we are gonna get it to fire on starting fluid in this video. I hope, I'm kind of counting my chickens here before they hatch, but I always get so optimistic about this stuff. We can do it, we can do it. What in the world is this guy? Something to do with the throttle? Look at that, it's a throttle switch. Oh, there is so much cool discovery to be done. Sweet. Here we go, people. First spark plug, and then we're sticking the boroscope in there. Okay, feels normal. Good sign. DeLorean spark plug number one, it looks beautiful. I don't know what kind of plug this is. It's a Bosch plug. It doesn't really look all that old. Honestly, I wonder if we can figure out how old this is. Looks really nice though. It's in good shape. We pulled out Bosch spark plugs, uh, HR6. HR6 zero. is what they would have come with and they were probably silvers. Silvers? Is what, yeah. Okay, I don't know if it says that. HR6 D, DS maybe it was yeah. on it. Yep, Yep. That's, that's the original plug. My guess is if it was parked in 91, I don't think he changed that filter or those plugs. Yeah, I think it's all original. Okay, cool, good yeah. to know. Are the wires bougie cord? Bougie cord 403 spark plug wires. Yeah, I would say those are the original wires too. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Okay, so that was Mike from DeLorean Midwest. Uh, they're one of the biggest DeLorean restoration shops well in the world. Uh, so these are original plugs. We had an original air filter, original spark plug wires, and what we had kind of talked about with that dirty air filter is that I bought the car from Fargo, North Dakota. But imagine Fargo, North Dakota in 1981. There's a good chance this guy was driving on gravel or dirt roads every once in a while. And air filters, I mean, they can get that bad in those types of conditions. So that is probably the original one, just sucking up a ton of dirt and the guy never changed it. Now my DeLorean has a ton of unknowns that we're gonna discover together, but something I know for sure is that there was never any damage reported because I ran the VIN through carvertical.com. Carvertical provides detailed vehicle history reports at a great price and you can use them to research the history of a car that you own and more importantly, one that you want to buy. There are many cars out there like this Escalade that look great in the ad pictures, but with Car Vertical, we know there was previous accident damage. You can use this information to make a more informed decision on your purchase and to negotiate a better price. Car Vertical is super easy. Just type in your VIN and they do the rest. They also have a very user-friendly app available in the App Store and Google Play if you need a report on the go. Best part is if you guys use code LEGIT at checkout, you're gonna get 10% off your order. So click the link down below or go to carvertical.com, use code LEGIT and give yourself peace of mind when looking to buy your next car. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Into cylinder one of our DeLorean engine. Please don't be rusty. Ooh, that's pretty. That's nice. Yeah, a little carbon, okay, whatever, but look at the cylinder walls. That's not bad. I vacuumed all the way around here, but there's still a little bit of dust coming in. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. That's not bad at all. We're definitely gonna be fogging out these cylinders and I'm gonna put in my traditional legit streetcars concoction potion that is gonna break up any rust around the rings because the last thing you wanna do is crank the engine over after 32 years and the rings are even slightly frozen in the cylinder and you can break the rings off. So we don't wanna do that. We're gonna do this properly. Let's keep pulling these plug wires out. We have to be really gentle with these spark plug wires because we're not gonna find these at the parts store. And the last thing you wanna do when you're pulling wires is pull from here because you can just pull the whole thing out and then you're in, you're in bad shape. So anyway, that's good. Okay, we're gonna do a little more vacuum in there. Another beautiful, beautiful Bosch plug. All right, there's the last one on this bank. Looking good. Cylinder two, looking good. A little dust in there. There's dust everywhere. That's just from pulling the plug out, no biggie. Um, but yeah, this looks good. Let's just move along here to the last one on this bank. Ah, it's pistons all the way up, but that's all right. Looks good. All right, guys, I got a little allergy action going on from the cat. I am uh, kind of allergic to cats, but anyway. Uh, here's what we're gonna use. We have our 100 year old oiling can and we're gonna put some transmission fluid in it. And we're also gonna mix in a little penetrating oil. And this is what I use for a magical potion 
in order to free up any stuck rings. You can also use engine oil, but transmission fluid has detergents in it and whatnot. Uh, and obviously penetrating oil will get in there as well. <laughs> I don't like to take any chances with old engines, so I go a little crazy. I do the engine fogging oil as well. This is really good if you know an engine is gonna be sitting around for a long time uh, to protect it from freezing up. So we're gonna fog it out with this and this can will spray upside down as well. All right, there's your fogging oil going in. And you can see just a few little sprays. This stuff is getting in everywhere. We already have a little puddle there. That's good. Now it's time for my legit street potion. There we go. You don't need too much of this. That's probably pretty good. I'll just go on down the road. And our last one. Okay, cool. It's blood for our engine. It smells really bad. This transmission fluid stinks, but it does a good job. And this is what it looks like after the fogging oil and the concoction. Obviously it's gonna puddle to one side and that's why I put a little of the penetrating oil in there. It'll kind of creep into all the other crevices. I gotta get to one of the spark plug wires that's buried in here and I was gonna cut this zip tie, but I feel bad doing it. Look at this. It's a branded labeled zip tie. I'm not really sure what that says. Something grand, I don't know, L grand or something. I don't, I don't know what that says, but that's, that's too cool to cut. I don't wanna cut that. Oh yeah, got it. <laughs> yes, this is a drum brake spring tool right here. And it just happens to fit perfectly in there to get that spark plug wire off. That's awesome. It looked like all of this was gonna need to come off. But we can maybe sneak our tool in there now. Oh yeah. We're gonna get real sneaky here. Not cutting that zip tie. I mean, eventually I'm gonna probably have to cut that zip tie. Let's face it, but, oh dude. This is what holds this up. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I thought it was up there. Sweet. Okay, but yeah, I mean, this is made of fiberglass, so it kind of like wears into it. And there's two different levels. Okay, these haven't completely broken yet, so I'll just keep going there. More DeLorean spark plug goodness. It's the best tool ever for this. Okay, maybe. Maybe not so much this one. Oh, no, no, no. It's not gonna disappoint. It does drum brake springs. It does DeLorean spark plug wires. It does it all. Oh man, get out of here, guys. If you guys have had one of these laying around in your toolbox since 1955, bring it back out. It's got more than one use. Spark plug number five. This one's got a little bit more rust on it. A little corrosion, no biggie. It's kind of more along the lines of what you expect in a car like this. But then again, it's signs like this that make me really happy. These hose clamps usually just rust out on older cars and they're still shiny and nice. There's just a little surface rust on some of the brackets. And I know it's dirty, but overall this engine compartment is in very, very nice condition. Everything is where it's supposed to be. The wiring harness looks to be in excellent condition. I mean, look at things like this. It's still very clean, well put together. Even the tape is still on the harness properly. This is great. I mean, considering that this car all cleaned up and sorted, fully sorted out is probably worth like 70 to 80 grand. I'm jinxing myself. I don't know why I'm gonna say this. I'm knocking on the urethane bumper. But if this engine runs well, we are in great shape, people. Great shape. Great Scott. I saw Biff one time. Uh, doing stand-up at Zany's, Zany's Comedy Club in Chicago. He is an excellent stand-up comedian. And the first minute, he's like, all right, guys, I'm gonna get all the Back to the Future questions out of the way. And he let us all raise our hands and ask questions. I didn't ask anything. Um, and then he went on with his normal set. It had nothing to do with Back to the Future, and he was great. I don't, I don't remember his name. I don't know what Biff's name in real life is, but it's Biff. I think that's what his stage name is, too. I don't know. Okay, so this stinks. I don't wanna have to undo this coolant tube, but it's really hard to get to this spark plug. Make like a tree and get out of here. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> oh, it's on, yes. Swivel for the win. Yeah. We got to all the plugs without taking anything apart by the air box. Sweet. The last one. Looks good. I'm gonna replace these, but I'm keeping these originals. First cylinder on the driver's side. Eh, a little debris fell in there from pulling the plug. I tried vacuuming all of it, but it happens. Look at the cross hatching though. This cylinder looks fantastic. And this piston is up quite a bit. But look at the carbon on the piston. Did they spray something in here before they let it sit? It almost looks a little oily, like maybe something did soak in. Or that's just me being helpful. Last one, please don't have a valve smashed into a piston. Please. Okay, well, the piston's all the way up. Looks intact. Okay, cool. All right, we're good. I'm going to oil and fog these three. Uh, and we're gonna let that sit in there for many, many hours as we discover other things on the DeLorean engine. We have to change the oil and then just a lot more exploration. Let's check the oil level on this engine. Yeah, it's got oil. Cool. 
you know, looks kind of old, but it, it's all there. I jacked this up to get to the drain pan for the oil. And yeah, we're working on the trailer because there's just really no reason to put this thing down on the ground right now. We can get to everything from back here. And to change the oil on a DeLorean, you need a 5 16 square head socket like this. It's kind of weird. Oh yeah. She's on there. There we go. First DeLorean oil change in 32 years. Yeah, that looks like some pretty old oil there. And yeah, we don't want to spill any. I thought it was going to go all inside of the frame here, but we're good. DeLorean figured that out. So this car actually calls for 20W50. It's a very, very thick oil for this engine. All right, DeLorean, click. Click, click, click. Click, 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 click. It's an old Fram filter. There's a ton of oil caked up here on the oil pan. Could be because of the placement of this filter. This is pretty much gonna spill oil everywhere. And then if this guy was driving on dirt roads, like we saw with that air filter, it could have just attracted all of the dirt and debris. Or it's got a slow oil leak, who knows? Okay, all right, new oil filter is on. Took me some time to figure this out, but this is the oil cap. It's also the PCV valve, I think. All right, guys, we're gonna go no funnel. And T minus three, two, one. Okay. Yeah, I spilled a little. Look at this goopy 2050. She thick. Drink up, little buddy. Hopefully this isn't a waste of oil and this engine's totally trashed, but we gotta give it a chance. All right, new oil filter, new oil. We're ready to see if this thing turns. So we've had these cylinders fogged out and oiled up for the last about three hours. And we found a wrench at the auto parts store that fits. It's a one and three eighths. I didn't bring that with me. And if you want to get a socket on here, you have to remove this entire muffler. And I don't want to do that. Oh, that moved. It's kind of hard though in the very beginning, but that's okay. Could have been just slightly frozen. Oh yeah. I just learned that this is asbestos right here, this little heat shield. So we're going to try not to breathe that in. I don't like breathing in asbestos. I'm fixing this DeLorean as best as I can. Let's see, oh, this is nice. Yeah, it turns very easily. Obviously we got the plugs out. No, this is good. Yeah, no, it's good. This engine spins. She spins, she's alive. Well, she's not really alive, she's, she's still dead, but she spins. Yeah, the DeLorean engine spins, this is awesome. It's so hard to get it to spin with this with this wrench and I have to have like one of my fingers smashed in between the asbestos and the wrench in order to do it and it really hurts. But it spins, but it spins. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Here's what we're gonna do, people. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to put power to the DeLorean. We're gonna see what lights up and with the plugs out of it, we're gonna crank the engine a little bit and see if it really spins on its own, see if the starter's any good. I'm throwing this wrench around as if you can easily repair the stainless on this car. You can't, you can't. That's like a big, big deal on these is if the body is dented up and you, it's like almost impossible to get right. So that's another reason why this car is such a big win because all I saw was it dusty in pictures and videos and stuff like that. You never know if there's a million little dents in there and there ain't. Oh, I wish these doors would stay up. We got the battery on this side. All right, this works too. All right, so what we have here is a really old battery and there's a few combs in here. There's this one then this one. This person was really into their hair. Okay, so this thing was just kind of hanging out over here. It's supposed to be strapped in and pushed in, but that's okay. This battery is really old. Hang on, that's a Series 78 battery. I think that's what the van has. Yeah, this has a 78. <laughs> yeah, we're taking the van battery. Cool. I love my van even more now. It's got the same battery as the DeLorean. And like 50 million other cars take one of these 78 side posts, but I could just go buy a battery for the DeLorean, which eventually I will, but parts store is kind of far away. Everything is just kind of far away. There we go. Okay, DeLorean battery. Coming out of our 700 horsepower Chevy Express van. I'm missing paint. Lots, man, I'm missing way more paint every day on that thing. I wanna see a day coat on this battery. They didn't really fill any of them in on top, but maybe we'll find something. I wonder how old this guy is. Megatron, that is like such a fitting name for a DeLorean battery or a transformer. Okay, Megatron. This is such a cool looking battery. I love this thing. I'm keeping you, Megatron. All right, guys, I'm about to hook up the negative battery cable. This is the first time the DeLorean is going to have power in over three decades. Woo! 
and it's singing to me. I even like the DeLorean chime. Just kidding, it's like a regular chime, but it's alive again. How many times is this thing gonna be alive and actually not really be alive? Let's go get my DeLorean keys out of my DeLorean pockets. These are van keys, house keys, Grand National keys, DeLorean keys. Look at these bad boys. Oh, did this have, did this have remote locks too? Sweet. No way. The lights on the door. Cool. I didn't even know that was a thing. Wow, they're all over the place. That's really nice. <laughs> hey, it's telling me the door's open. Nice. Ooh, I hope that's not for real. That we have a totally way full tank. That would not be good. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, that'd be so cool if there was a tape in here. Does this work? Oh, I hear static. That is the, oh, the it companies works. that are behind. I don't know if that's copyright or not, this lady speaking. Oh, wow, the speakers work. That's pretty cool. I, I kind of wasn't expecting that. So this is the headlight switch right here. Are they on? Yeah. We got lights? Dude, you got headlights. We got headlights. They work. You know, these are like the most basic things, but you never know. Like you never know on an old car if the whole harness is chewed up and you got to chase wires forever because the lights don't work. This is, all these little things are, they're wins. Wait, hold on. This has a power window switch button inside, but the windows are just like these little guys here. I, I kind of thought those were manual. Like I, I've never been in a DeLorean before. Let's see if those work. Hey, I got a good brake light and a, and a bad brake light. Okay, let's see if these windows work. Oh, no way. Oh, it's opposite. No, no, it doesn't do that. <laughs> Are you kidding? Hang on. Okay, yeah, it turns off the little Hi guys. <laughs> no way, that works. Let's see if this one works. They're, they're really good window motors too. Oh yeah, they're really good window motors too. So cool. I can't believe I'm gonna be driving this car. What in the world does this do? Uh, hey Max. <laughs> Say, imagine going through a drive-thru. Can I? How do I give you a drink? Yeah, how do you do drive-throughs? Burger, but then yeah, a large shake. I can't get that to this door. Well, in the '80s, this is about as big as you know drinks got. I mean, if you if you had a Blizzard from Dairy Queen, you'd be fine. Oh, that's right. Put it side or your money back. Yeah, if they can't flip it around, you get your money back. Um, okay, what is? Okay, those are working. For the mirror, I don't know what this does though. Oh, that's the lock. Okay, cool. Wow, that's a hefty, hefty lock switch. But that works too. This, I mean, obviously this is like a belt or something. Like this isn't supposed to be here. He just did this like to make life easier. I don't, I mean, it's ugly. I'm, I'm taking that off. What does this thing do? I have no idea what that does. I got this cool net back here. Oh, you know what this is? I had read that they made this specifically to fit golf clubs because they really wanted to appeal to people that would go golfing. Oh no, is this made of wood? Dude, this is all made of wood. That's interesting. We got some sunglasses. Nice. Wow, these are thick, yeah. <laughs> oh, that will like literally make you go blind. These are like an inch thick bulletproof glass glasses. Wow, dude. I don't wanna be mean, but this guy was like, he was blind. Maybe that's why he stopped driving it. Maybe that is why he stopped driving it. Cause I mean, dude, I, I don't know much about glasses, but like, I, I literally can't even do that. It'll like, it hurts already. Wow, maybe that's why. I mean, yeah, if you can't see well, this is not like, the best car to drive at all. Oh, is this the horn? Oh, you push it in for the horn, I think. Brights? Hey, we got brights. Here's some brakes. Cool. Guys, I'm married to a wonderful woman and I have three beautiful children. So those are all the best days of my life, wedding, having kids and all that kind of stuff. But in my car life, in my car life, there have been moments like this, but this is like, this is way, way, this is top three. Top three, I'm gonna say for, for even my future awesome car events, like buying this car and what we're doing right now, this is nuts. And what's crazy is I had an opportunity to go look at other DeLoreans, not to buy, but like just to go drive them. People have offered, hey, you can drive my DeLorean, you can see my DeLorean, and I'm like, no, I don't even wanna sit in one. I don't wanna drive one, I don't want, I don't want anything. I just wanna buy one and discover it all 
And that's what we're doing. I did a little research on Google and some stats and whatnot, but I've me pressing all these buttons and stuff. This is all for the first time and it's in my own. I have no idea what's going on here though. Is there a center console? You guys always make fun of me that I say center console. I probably do, but it's center console. What is going on? Oh, whoa. Okay. This guy was a smoker. I'm not a cigarette expert. I've never smoked, but Vantage Ultra Lights. It doesn't smell like smoke in here. It just kind of smells like an old, old basement or an old car with mold in it. Okay, that's what that is. So this person smoked in here. Must have really sucked with those windows. Okay, so we know the engine turns over. I'm gonna give it just a little bump here. <laughs> Dude, hold on, can you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max is gonna turn it over for me. Let's let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, just give it a little bump. Yeah, dude. That's beautiful. Uh, keep it going for like two seconds. Yes, guys. Yes! This is great. This, I mean, I had no idea. This thing could have had like a rod through the side of the block. Nate came out and made a video for me, but Nate doesn't know anything about cars. He just was there to make sure that this car even existed because the guy bought it from wanted a $3,000 non-refundable deposit. So I was a little nervous. So he took a look at the title and the keys, made sure the car was there and it wasn't like destroyed, like smashed. The engine was the big what if. I mean, it still is like it cranks. It could still have lots and lots of issues. And the frame, the frame was another big one as well. And all the frame rails, all the structure of the vehicle is in great shape. So from the factory, they coated these in epoxy. You can see the drips here. And there's some cracking in the epoxy. It's very thick, but the metal is solid. Nothing is rotted through. And if you guys are interested in a DeLorean, you have to make sure that the frame is solid because there's no replacement. Like you'd have to cut sections out and, and basically make them. Or you could get a good donor car, but it's a big, big project. And another thing is that everything underneath here is made of fiberglass. So you gotta look underneath and make sure that nothing has been smashed in. Like if you hit a boulder or something, all this would be cracked up and that wouldn't be good. And all the fiberglass on this car is in excellent condition. Okay, so we are going to put the plugs back in. I'm gonna see if I can get this engine to fire. I'm not gonna run it very long at all, um, but I, I just, I need to know before we hit the road again and I need to know what is in here. What is this? <gasps> no, there is not. A tape, the Economic Recovery Tax Act of 1981. <laughs> that is exactly the tape I was hoping would be in here. We're gonna learn all about the Economic Recovery Tax Act of 1981. <laughs> what? That is hilarious. I wanna see if the tape deck works and I'm leaving it a factory tape deck. I'm only going to listen to cassette tapes. Um, I already have the Back to the Future soundtrack on order. It's on eBay for like 17 bucks, but look at this, we have the original DeLorean owner's manual. Dude, and receipts and stuff. Registration that expires in 1983. Yeah, this is a service here in Moorhead, Minnesota. And they changed the oil. It was $29 for an oil change in 1984. I wasn't even born. I was a few months away from being born. That's actually a really expensive oil change for 1984. The shop in Moorhead, Minnesota must have been like, what, you bringing this here? Like, that's kind of weird. It was just a quick oil lube place. DeLorean consumer information, important information for DeLorean owners. Oh, look at this emissions warranty, recommended fluid change. Yeah, look at this, it uses 2050 oil. I thought that was pretty wild. Wow. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh, another tape, another tape. The creative thinking system, 1977. Another good one. Dude, how deep does this go? Oh my gosh, dude. This is a very vast, vast uh, little compartment here. We have some tools. Another tape, a mystery tape. Oh wait, no, St. Germain, full tilt management. Got some Kleenex, 27 cents. Things cost 27 cents back then. March, 1986 registration, more registration. Oh, there's more people. Oh, here's a receipt. Uh, Champion Auto wipers, 2.99. Wow, good old days. Vehicle registration, this is 1990. We have a receipt from 1988 mile an hour. Uh, B.N. Woodson, I have no idea what this is. No more tapes. Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, August 1982, Pine Palm. Oh, it's like a golf, it's a golf thing. So this is some kind of golf outing. What is this? Oh, some screws. Is this a checkbook or something? Oh, this is totally a checkbook, isn't it? Oh no, it's not. It's a personal diary book from 1984. Oh, no way. The plutonium is stored underneath the barn. I knew it. I knew it was under the barn. There's nothing written in here, but I'm, I'm gonna start making notes in this thing. Okay. 
We got this baby little crescent wrench, some tools, a handle. Oh, this is a broken door handle. Yeah, they replaced it. March 1985 sticker, a washer. Okay guys, that's about it. It's like paper clips and washers. March 1987. Who else out there would find this to be the coolest thing in the world right now? Just discovering all this stuff. I know this car needs a ton of work, but I mean, I wouldn't trade buying a completed car for this, even if it was the same cost. I mean, I'd probably buy that car and sell it and take the money and buy a few of these, but this is too much fun. I am saving every piece of documentation I have on this car, I'm keeping this car for the rest of my life. This is getting filed away with the Trans Am, the Grand National. I just, I love it. Who else wants to know if the cassette tapes work? Creative Thinking System by Mike Vance, let's do it. We'll learn about the economy at some other point. Uh, oh, a Super 8 Motel receipt. What year is this? I don't know, but it was 38 bucks to stay at the Super 8 Motel. 1980, it's from 1981. So you got this DeLorean, stayed at a hotel in Bloomington, Minnesota. And we got a map too. It was a $1.25 map, Minnesota road map. Tape deck time. My enthusiasm never in any way means that I think that I have all the answers. I do not think that. In fact, I don't really like people who think they have all the answers. I find that most of the people who think they have all the answers that are, are the ones that don't have any. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm interested. Mike Vance, I want to know what Mike Vance has to say. I'm only going to listen to cassette tapes. Did I already say that? I'm only listening to cassette tapes. This is way too cool. Let's, uh, let's get some spark plugs back in and some starting fluid and see, let's just see what happens. I won't run it long. Don't worry. We're not going to hurt anything. Mike Vance, motivational speaker. There he is, the man himself. Born in 1929. Ah, oh, he's dead. Rest in peace, Mike. Became the Dean of Disney University, developing staff training and critical thinking concepts. He was one of the most requested speakers in the United States. Many years in charge of ideas and people development for Walt Disney. Wasn't what I was expecting, but all right. Eventually, I'm going to put new plugs in this. We're just going to reuse these because they're in great shape. And the reason I want to start it now is because I'm not going to have this on a rack at my shop for a while. It could potentially be a few weeks and I need to start getting a game plan together with parts. So if this thing's got a knock or something like that, I got to start looking for an engine and I just want to know everything now so I can get on top of that and we'll do new plugs and all that stuff later. Let's just see if this thing works. Okay, that was the hardest one. These are ways to take this coolant pipe off but uh, we're not doing that right now. I don't wanna get cooling all over the place. All right, all the spark plugs and plug wires are back in. We have our new oil and we didn't really take much else off. We're gonna leave the air filter off. We don't want that air filter anywhere near there, uh, but we're gonna feed a little bit of starting fluid into here. But I do not wanna smoke out Wayne and Kyle's garage. So we threw the battery back in the van and hooked up the trailer. We're gonna pull this thing outside. The DeLorean's outside of the barn for our first potential start, and we're out next to the cornfield, which is just so fitting from the first one when they do the first time travel back to 1955 and they land in the cornfield. Just it couldn't be more perfect. Let's do this. All right, go ahead and crank it. Keep going. Oh, it started to fire. It's cranking very slow, though. And we just took the battery out of the van, of course, which is charged. Oh, it wants to go though. All right, go again. Come on, baby. All right, all right, all right. hang on, hang on. It's combusting something. We got to get a jumper on here. And just hooked up our little jumper. Go ahead. There it is. There it is. <laughs> it's running. It's running! Look at that! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! We got it! My DeLorean's alive! Sounds like it's got an exhaust leak, but other than that, the motor itself sounds good! Oh, there we go! There we go! No way! It's missing a little bit, that's okay! My $33,000 DeLorean is alive! Guys, we are gonna make this car beautiful. It is going to run and drive, oh my gosh. I'm gonna be driving my own DeLorean this year. I am not knocking on anything, it's gonna happen. Oh man, we gotta do plugs. We gotta get the actual fuel system running, of course. 
All right, all right, little buddy. You did good. I know, I know, I want you to stay alive too. Yes, you're just going back to sleep. That's all, that's all, but I won't abandon you for 32 years. I got a DeLorean that runs! <laughs> Cornfield. She's alive! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I can't believe it, man. That's right? awesome. It runs so good. Off starting fluid. Oh my gosh. This is so good. I cannot wait to get this back to legit three quarters. I already have like a list of stuff that I need, but I don't believe an engine is one of those things. I, we might need a transmission still. We can't drive it yet, but we're gonna have to dig into the fuel system, of course. Obviously belts, hoses, cooling system, the whole nine. But I think when we get it back to legit three quarters, one of the first things we're gonna do is a full detail. I don't want it in my shop like this. I wanna transform it first. And uh, supposedly on the DeLorean, it's a very satisfying process. There's really no buffing of the stainless steel or anything, um, but there are some tricks some people use gasoline to clean it, and this thing is going to shine up like crazy. We're gonna take the seats out, we're gonna detail the interior, we're gonna make this thing mint. Well, maybe not mint mint yet, but we're gonna make it super, super nice uh, while I wait for all of the parts. I'm ecstatic, I just, <laughs> I seriously cannot believe this. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and strap this thing back on and uh, head back to Legit Three Quarters and drop this thing off. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I. I'm just a little kid on cloud nine right now. So if you did enjoy this, give it a big thumbs up. Share this video with all your friends and family. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe if you love DeLoreans and you wanna see some more DeLorean content. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. It's three o'clock in the morning. I am dead tired, but we made it back. We made it back to legit three quarters with the DeLorean and the van. I'm pretty excited, pretty excited, very tired. Gonna get some sleep after I move some cars in. We did it, we did it. Time machine, I mean DeLorean and, and something. Um, you like that 1955 reference there, Max? Mm-hmm. You know where that's from? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Time machine. I mean, DeLorean. I love the Back to the Future movies, but as the most... Okay. All right, we're good. I'm going to... Uh, uh, DeLorean. And as you could imagine, as one of the most iconic movie cars in the whole world... Get out of here, kitty! <laughs> Do we know this cat's name? We just call it Farm Cat? Lester the farm cat, all right. Lester, you gotta get up out of my intro. It's a nice cat. Hey, little buddy. Hey. All right, Lester, go eat your food. Come on, come on. Why do you have eight <laughs> pairs of keys? I love keys. Good key guy. Time machine, I mean DeLorean, but being a car that has some stuff in it, Okay, this is B-roll of missing paint. B-roll is footage that doesn't have someone necessarily talking and pointing the camera at the same time. It's this very sophisticated footage that was actually invented around the time that Oppenheimer invented the nuclear bomb. And he really meant to invent B-roll. So just if you needed to know the history of B-roll while you edit out this B-roll. The stuff I have to do for this YouTube channel is ridiculous, but I love it.